Since the dawn of humanity, our species has witnessed countless events that have radically changed the way we do some things. These events are called paradigm shifts. Going from a hunter-gatherer cave-dweller lifestyle to a sedentary lifestyle based on agriculture and buildings is a paradigm shift. Going from coal-based power plants to nuclear energy is a paradigm shift. And today I'm going to talk about a paradigm shift that applies to the world of cryptocurrency. But before we get to that, let's just take a look back at the beginning of the 20th century because there are some interesting similarities between the present and the past. At the end of the 19th century, while the industrial revolution was already well underway, many factories around the world still operated on somewhat dated principles. Workers made products one at a time from start to finish like artisans of old. They often had to walk and work in different parts of their factories which wasted time and they had to learn more which meant that their skills were often less advanced in most areas. And then a few industrialists realized in the span of a few years that these processes were not really adapted to the manufacturing of a large number of cars. The most famous among them, who you certainly heard of during history classes, was Henry Ford. And here in France, Louis Renault and André Citroën had the same idea. They all became interested in assembly line work more or less at the same time. In Ford's factory, the first assembly line was installed in 1913. And in Renault's factories, some experiments were carried out as early as 1898, but Renault couldn't bring them to fruition as early as Ford. Firstly, because some workers were unhappy at the idea of seeing their jobs change in nature, and secondly, because of the variety of production in the Renault factories, which made it difficult to use such a chain. So, Louis Renault was not immediately able to set up an assembly line. It was only during the First World War that the process was finally introduced in order to speed up production of critical military equipment. Finally, Citroën was the slowest of the three, with his first rudimentary assembly line appearing around 1919. Since then, the idea has come a long way and today all the world's cars are made on an assembly line, except for a handful of brands that sell luxury cars. The paradigm shift that took place at that time was the use of a manufacturing method that aimed to split the work into several distinct fractions to improve the speed of completion of each fraction. With assembly line work, the time taken to manufacture a Ford car was divided by 12. Now what if I told you that this paradigm shift could also happen for cryptocurrency? But I'm warning you, I'm not saying that it's possible to do 12 times better than any other cryptocurrencies just like that, alright? It's just that it's an interesting idea anyway, so I'll explain the principle a bit. Currently, the cryptocurrencies we know are overwhelmingly monolithic entities. They are networks that do everything from start to finish block creation, consensus and storage, smart contract execution, the nodes that are active on these networks have to do everything by themselves. So you guessed it, just like a car, the idea here is to break down the operation of a crypto network into several pieces. It is with this idea in mind that a lazy ledger white paper was written and it is on this basis that the Celestia network is being developed. Don't worry, the Celestia team isn't plagiarizing things, as it was Celestia's CEO who wrote the Lazy Ledger white paper. They just wanted to use a classier name because Lazy Ledger sounds a bit like a blockchain for slackers wearing pajamas all day, kinda like me, it's not very serious. So the network that they're developing is called Celestia. Sounds a lot better, right? And it actually fits the product very well because Celestia is based on the Cosmos SDK and the Tendermint consensus. In fact, Cosmos means the stars and Celestia means everything in the sky. So we have a network based on Cosmos as well as a white paper that explains how to create a network designed to split the work like a modern factory does. There is a fairly solid team working to achieve this objective. The CEO is Mustafa al Bassam, who is also the writer of the Lazy Ledger white paper as I said earlier. Then there is Ismail Kofi who is a former senior engineer at the Interchange Foundation and who worked on Tendermint. John Adler, who is the creator of Optimistic Rollups, Nick White, who is the co-founder of Harmony, two programmers who worked a lot on Ethereum, and so on. But you're probably more interested in the project itself. If we want to summarize the idea in one sentence, we could say that Celestia is a network that does absolutely nothing else but receive transactions, pack them up, store them as blocks, and then make their content accessible to those who request it. Celestia does not check the content of the blocks, the network simply makes sure that they have the right structure to be stored in its memory. What's written inside doesn't matter one bit. 
At first glance, one might get the impression that Celestia is a network that serves no purpose, that it is a kind of failed R-weave. And this is of course totally wrong. In order to understand, you have to think of blockchains in the same way you think of a car assembly line. The assembly of a car starts with a chassis, and the chassis alone won't get you very far if you try to drive it. But at the same time, without a chassis, your vehicle is likely to end up like Laurel and Hardy's crumbling car. So Celestia is to cryptocurrencies what a chassis is to cars, a structure to build on and from which you can build many different things. With the same chassis, you can have a dozen different models out of the factories. With Celestia, you can have lots of different crypto networks whose blocks are all stored in the same place on the Celestia chain. Logically, your first question would be, what's the point of doing this? After all, it's not that complicated to download the Cosmos SDK and do things your way with a network that handles everything. Well, actually, things are not so simple. First of all, because the Cosmos SDK is nice, but you often have to modify it extensively if you want to achieve particular goals, even if the basics are there. And by the way, that's the case for the Celestia team who modified the basic Cosmos kit quite a bit. Secondly, the major problem faced by the creators of new cryptocurrencies is the constitution of a network of reliable, competent validators who are interested in the project and who will be there for the long term. It is extremely difficult to get enough validators quickly so that the network can be described as decentralized. And then you have to organize token sales, contact partners, go and do podcasts and interviews, all of which is quite complex and time-consuming, in addition to causing legal problems at times. What some developers need is a network that allows them to publish an independent decentralized application the same way they would publish a program on GitHub. No complex launch with a token sale, no need to gather a community of validators, no need to worry about data storage by network nodes, etc. And Celestia is a relevant answer to this problem since it is a network of validators who offer their services to developers and who do not need a new currency to be paid with since they will already have their own, that is to say, Celestia's native currency. It is therefore a particularly useful network for those small developers who wish to make use of a blockchain but who are unable to set up a complete network with hundreds of validators. And no matter how many of these small developers there are, with Celestia's network architecture, it should theoretically be possible to satisfy their needs, at least partially. They will be able to benefit from a data storage network that is decentralized, while potentially keeping the transaction execution part for a limited set of servers, or even a single server which is much easier to set up. In fact, they would even be able to let the end user's machines do that, which would represent a completely new kind of crypto network. So that's Celestia's first target, but it's not the only one. The other target is roll-up networks. You may have heard of these before, whether it's zero-knowledge proof roll-ups from Starkware or other systems like the Optimism and Arbitrum roll-ups on Ethereum. There are different categories and their workings are rather complex. But to put them in a nutshell, roll-ups are systems that allow you to get out of a blockchain and process a lot of calculations outside before recording the end results on the chain. It is a solution that avoids overloading the network nodes of the main chains with complex and or very numerous calculations. However, rollups still suffer from a major problem, which is that storage on the main chain they are trying to unclog can still be expensive. So in general, rollups need a chain on which they can store their data for cheap. By limiting the amount of interaction with chains like Ethereum that are expensive to use, they could also reduce their operating costs and provide even better services to users. And again, as you can see, Celestia is a perfect solution for this particular problem. Now the question you probably want me to answer is, how does Celestia work? The first thing you need to know is that architecture-wise, there are three types of network nodes. Storage nodes, consensus nodes and light nodes. Storage nodes are easy to understand, they store data from consensus nodes and they send copies of the data to light nodes that request it. Then there's the consensus nodes, who are responsible for receiving the transactions issued by the light nodes, agreeing on their validity according to the Celestia network rules, compacting them into a block and then transferring this block to the storage nodes. Finally, the light nodes, which are in fact also the users of the network, are there simply to send transactions to the consensus nodes who will process those requests for a fee and to download information from the storage nodes. However, the light nodes also have a secondary role, which is to participate indirectly in securing the network. Indeed, a big problem solved by the Celestia architecture is the so-called data availability problem. 
It is normally difficult to ensure that the consensus and storage nodes have not published incomplete blocks. The techniques used are called erasure codes. They are quite complex, so I won't waste time describing them. Those of you who are interested can go and have a look at the Lazy Ledger white paper. But basically, when a light node requests a copy of one or more small pieces of block on Celestia, it can quickly be 99.99999% sure that the whole block has been published, because to hide a piece of block on Celestia, a cheater will have to hide more than half the block. It should also be noted that the security model also depends on the number of light clients in the network, and in turn, that affects the maximum block size. When a small number of light clients are present, they will not ask for much information from the storage nodes, so a malicious node could potentially, with some luck, publish an incomplete block without it being noticed. But if there are a large number of light clients on the network, and if the blocks are small enough, the storage nodes will most likely be forced to provide the entirety of the data inside a block, even if it is only sent in small chunks over time. If there is a block that can be divided in 1000 chunks for example, and there are 10,000 light clients that each request different chunks of that block, in the end there is a good chance that the majority of the content of the block will be sent to each of them, so fraud will be almost impossible. And when this threshold is reached, when it is impossible to cheat on the network, then it is possible to increase the block size without reducing the security or speed of the network. Of course, that's going to happen within the limits of the hardware constraints that the storage and consensus nodes must abide by. But overall, this means that the more light nodes there are, the more the network will be able to increase the block size and the more it will consequently be able to increase its transaction throughput. So now you know how the security of the data stored on Celestia is guaranteed. But that's not its only advantage, and we'll now talk about some other interesting elements. First of all, one thing I like with Celestia, which I briefly mentioned earlier, is that for those who want to launch a decentralized application without bothering with the architecture of a traditional blockchain, it will be possible to use Celestia's currency to pay for data storage. And that's not all. It will also be possible for users of a network with a specific token to pay the nodes with the network cryptocurrency they are using, and the Celestia nodes will automatically exchange these tokens for Celestia currency to pay for storage. So by using a network that relies on Celestia, individuals will not be required to own Celestia coins at all to fund the storage of their transactions. This process could be entirely invisible to them. Secondly, a very interesting property of Celestia is that since the information stored on the network can have absolutely any format, there are no compatibility rules regarding the language used, etc. All that matters is the part of the code that is used to talk to the Celestia nodes, which obviously has to respect certain rules. But inside the blocks you could find Solidity codes, as well as Golang or Rust, everything is compatible. And the consequence of this property is that basically traditional hard forks become both unnecessary and impossible. Since any data can be stored in a block and Celestia does not bother to understand its content, there is no universal interpretation of this data from the Celestia network's point of view. The interpretation of the data is a task performed by the light nodes, which may in some cases be individuals. This means that if an individual decides to improve in some way the application he is using, he would be able to interpret the blocks in a different way from the other users of the same application, without having to force them to change their version of the application. All he risks is that the changes he has made will render the blocks he will create in the future incomprehensible for others, in which case other users who have remained on the old version of the application will pretend that these blocks do not exist. So with a phenomenon like this, you could end up with two different communities using two applications that have evolved differently but still have a common ancestor. Their chain will use the exact same blocks on the exact same network. This is slightly different from old school forks, because, for example, in the case of Ethereum and Ethereum Classic, the Ethereum Classic chain stores its blocks on another set of nodes that is dedicated to its chain only. In the case of application built on Celestia, it will literally be the same blocks that are used by both communities, not just copies. Finally, going back to what I said earlier about developers wanting to launch their application without having a network, let's explain a bit. It will be possible for developers to publish an application to install on your PC, which will allow you to communicate with the Celestia network, and which will turn your personal computer into a Celestia light node. 
For most applications, the light nodes will be servers owned by the developer or the community, but in this case, you will be the light node. Your computer will directly request the pieces of the blocks it is interested in from the storage nodes. Those blocks, of course, are those related to the application you are using. And when you use the application, it will also be your personal computer that sends transactions to the consensus nodes. This is a type of application that will probably be designed for conventional computers and not for mobile phones. But it will still offer a lot of possibilities for developers who cannot set up a network of dedicated servers that run 24 hours a day. So, in conclusion, Celestia is a proof-of-stake network with an innovative concept and it could immensely help people who have ideas but no budget to launch potentially revolutionary projects on their own. Lastly, of course, it's also a network that will improve the scalability of champions like Ethereum by reducing the amount of times rollups have to interact with overloaded chains. Unfortunately, it is still being developed. We are currently going through the DevNet, a developer-only version, which will be followed by a testnet, a test network open to a larger number of participants, and a mainnet, a final network, version 1.0, in the second half of 2022, if all goes well. So if you're interested in the project, don't hesitate to check out their Discord server, their Telegram group, their website, etc. And beware of scams, since for the moment, no sale of Celestia coins is planned. And now, all that's left for me to say is have a nice day and don't hesitate to visit the Journal du Coin's YouTube channel if you want to see Nick White and Mustafa Albasam's recent interview with my colleague Sami. Goodbye!